so here's Louise and Gumbo. Um, no. So Louise and Gumbo and I are outside enjoying this absolutely beautiful spring day. We don't have many, many really nice days uh, here in southern Louisiana. Either it's cold, wet, or very hot. So in the spring and in the fall, we do get a few weeks of very nice weather. Um, so when I'm not out here with them or the chickens or uh, the dogs and cats, I'm upstairs sewing. But in this time of year, I don't spend a lot of time sewing because I'm out here enjoying the weather and the animals in the garden. So I do spend a lot of time in our big garden. Um, but since I don't milk these guys anymore, it gives me some free time to work. Um, but let's go inside and see what I am working on in the sewing room. So here we are inside the sewing room and in this video we are working on machine binding. As most of y'all know, I don't do anything by machine. I'm sorry. As most of you know, I don't do anything by hand and especially not binding. With the uh, multitude of quilts that I have to make as samples, I just don't have time to sew anything by hand nor do I like sewing anything by hand. So this cute little wall hanging that we put together to display this adorable fabric uh, by Three Wishes. Um, where in this video, we are going to put this binding on by hand. So you can see the back looks just as pretty, including the, the mitered corner, looks just as pretty, pretty as the front. So here we will be using our edge stitch foot. We will be using Wonderfill thread. We'll be using Decobob and Invisifil and our wonderful sewing machine. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so one of the first things we're gonna do when creating our binding and sewing on our binding for our quilt, as most of you know, if you've ever put binding on a quilt, um, we need to cut our strips. We have to have binding. Now, when we are making binding for a quilt that just has four corners, um, and they're 90 degree corners, which are the majority of the quilts out there. There's absolutely no reason or no need to cut your binding strips on the bias. We just cut them salvage to salvage. So the key with the way I do my binding is I cut my strips to an eighth inch. Like I mentioned in the beginning, I don't do anything by hand. Everything that I sew, everything that I do, with the exception of my buttons on my shirts, um, which I do sew on by hand, um, I do everything by machine. I've evolved essentially to manipulate the machine and get the machine to do what I need it to do because I don't want to do things by hand. If I do binding by hand, it'll take forever. I do hand sewing very, very slowly. So I've kind of just given up on it. So, but the trick is, trick number one, is to cut the strips two and an eighth inch wide. Um, the reason behind that is because I want my binding to be very nice and tight up against my quilt. I don't want any um, gap or any space between the edge of my quilt and the fold of that binding. I want it to wrap around nice and tightly. Also, if your binding uh, strip is cut too wide what will essentially happen is when you flip that fabric to the back is you'll typically have a little extra flap or a little extra fold um, beyond where your stitching is especially depending on what type of stitch you choose um, I don't want any of that excess so I used to cut it two and a quarter but I found that was still a little too big a little bigger than what I wanted um, so two and an eighth works out perfectly and I tried two inches but that was a little too tight I wasn't always covering up my quarter inch seam from when I sewed it onto the front so let's cut our binding strips for this quote that we'll be doing the binding for um, right now. 
Okay, so now I've got my strips cut for my binding. Um, I probably cut way too many that I needed, uh, but you always want to calculate and see how many strips you need for the circumference of your quilt and cut that much binding strips. Um, and it's always, always, always better to have more than not enough. You don't ever want to get to the point where you're almost finished sewing on the binding initially and you find out that you're a few inches too short. Um, and if you're just long enough, it can make it difficult to finish off those, that, um, combi um, joining those edges. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew my binding strips, my pieces together. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to take right sides together and I'm going to lay them like this and I'm going to sew from here down to here just that diagonal line and so you can pin it you can draw a line um, but I find for something like this it really is just easy enough they're small strips to sew here from here to here without having to mark anything to really pin anything um, because if it's off a little bit once you're all once your bindings all done um, you're, you're not gonna really know so let's go to the sewing machine sew these together and um, We'll move on to the next step. Okay, so here we are at the sewing machine. So I've got my pieces right sides together. Now the one time to really pay attention is if you're using a solid. If you're using a fabric that looks the same on the front and the back, you really want to pay attention to make sure you're sewing the same sides together continuously um, because when they look the same it's easy to get them twisted and then when your binding's done you've got one face in one way and one face in the other way. So you always want to make sure you're paying attention mainly when you're working with um, solid fabrics because you can't get them twisted up. So here I'll lay it as close to the salvage as I can because I don't want to waste any more fabric than I already am. Um, and the reason we sew them diagonally is so that seam isn't going directly down the center of our binding, which can be really bulky when we're um, our bindings on our quilt or even when we're sewing our binding onto our quilt. So that's why I sew them at an angle. So we just line them up here. And then we'll just sew from corner to corner. And we'll sew all of our pieces together. So now what we'll go do is we'll go and trim all this excess fabric um, to the side of the stitch. We'll trim it off and we'll use a ruler so we'll trim so we have uh, about a quarter of an inch to the right of that seam trimmed. And then we'll go and we'll go press these seams. Okay, so here are our seams. So now we're going to take our ruler, which I like to use my little six and a half inch creative grid ruler. And I'll use a quarter inch marking here and I'll line that up on my seam. And then I'll just trim that off. And I'll do that for all of the seams that I created. Okay, so now I've got all my seams trimmed, and so they should line up nicely at the, at the top and at the bottom. And then we'll eventually trim off these little end pieces. But what we're going to go do, we're going to go to the iron and we're going to press these nice and flat. You can press them open, which will then evenly help evenly distribute um, that bulk of that seam. <laughs> 
so the binding will be flatter or you could press them to one side it's really up to you but I will press these open because it does help the binding stay flatter and have less bulk all right so now I've got my seams nice and pressed open so now what we're going to do we're going to finish making the binding essentially so we've got our a strip together but it's not ready to be sewn onto the quilt so what we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to take our two and an eighth inch uh, wide binding or strip piece and we're going to press it long ways like this so you want to make sure that you're pressing the raw edges right along the edge of each other and this will give us our binding that would be ready to be sewn onto our quilt so we'll press this the entire length of the strip and then we'll move on to the next step, which is essentially sewing it onto the machine. I'm sewing, sorry, sewing it on to the quilt. So all my binding is made and we're ready to sew it onto the quilt. So I'll get the quilt, which is right here, and we'll go sew it on. Okay, so we're at the machine and we're ready to sew our binding onto our quilt. But you also wanna make sure that these little dog ears, you wanna make sure they're trimmed off because they'll just be in your way and they'll just eventually add bulk to your binding when you go and finish it all up. So we want to make sure all that's trimmed up before you continue. And we just had a few. Yeah. And you can actually cut these off once you finish sewing your binding on what we're about to do here. But, or you can do it ahead of time. So now when it comes to sewing on your binding, uh, we use a quarter inch seam allowance so you can use your quarter inch foot I do highly recommend using your quarter inch foot uh, primarily because it has those quarter inch markings because you'll see when we um, make our turns that we need to make sure that we stop a quarter of an inch from the edge of our quilt and this first marking here is a quarter of an inch from the edge of the quilt and that will give us a gap of a quarter of an inch so that's why it's important to use a quarter inch foot and here on my Bernina, I'm using the 97D, which is um, better suited for the nine millimeter stitch width machine. And using the dual feed is very important when working with a D foot. Um, and that dual feed, which acts as a built-in walking foot, really does help feed the quilt through. Because we're dealing with quite a few layers of fabric. Also, one of my tricks, so trick number two when doing my binding, is I want to make sure that the bobbin thread that I have in, which I like to use deco bob, um, the bobbin thread that I have in matches my back, uh, my backing on my quilt. So I want it to blend in as much as possible because for if for whatever reason, um, and you'll see, for whatever reason, when we wrap the um, binding around to the back, we want to make sure that the folded edge of my binding is lined up exactly or slightly covering up that quarter inch seam that I'm about to create right now. But in the, in the event that it doesn't, and none of this is perfect, but in the event that it doesn't line up, if we see that little bit of stitching, we want to blend in with the, our backing as much as possible. I wouldn't rec recommend just having whatever on our bind, on our uh, bobbin. I would recommend having like a dark color or anything that doesn't match our quilt because if it doesn't get covered up, it's gonna be very noticeable. And a lot of things that I've kind of adapted to do is to make it disappear or make it as less noticeable as possible whenever we're doing some of these things. So that is trick number two is to make sure you're using bobbin thread that matches the backing of your quilt as much as possible. So in this case, I've got an 80 weight um, deco bob, which is a wonder fill thread product in the bobbin. And I actually have that on top. 
but the top thread isn't as important in this case as the bottom thread is. So what we're going to do, we want to make sure, and this is something that I always do and not on purpose, is you don't want to start too close to the edge. You really want to start a good 10 to 12 inches away from the corner of your quilt. But you don't want to, let's see if I can find an end. So you don't want to um, start with a short tail. You still want to have a nice long 12 or so, or 12 or so inch tail um, because it's going to make it a lot easier when you come back around and join this end with the other end of your binding. So like I said, I like to start about 12 inches from the edge, if I remember, and make sure I have a nice long tail. You could start in the middle of the quilt, it doesn't matter, um, but I do, you want to make sure you have it a good amount of distance. So we'll start, say, right here. And so we're just going to do a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. So when I get to the corner, I'll stop and we'll talk about that. Okay, so here we're reaching the edge of our first corner that we're going to be making. So remember, we want to make sure that the edge of our quilt stops right at this first mark on our foot. Or if you're not using a quarter inch foot, you want to make sure you stop a quarter, and exactly, a quarter of an inch from the edge of our quilt. So when this edge reaches, this marking, then I like to back stitch to secure that stitch, and then we can cut our thread. So now what we're going to do is we are going to we are going to take our binding. We're going to pull it up and see how it makes this angle here. And we want this fold, so this corner right here, we want this raw edge to basically nice, be nice in line with the raw edge of our quilt. So I'll do it again. So we, it, we stopped here, we fold it up like this. Now we're going to fold it down like this. And so what we wanna do is we want to have this new fold right at the top be lined up nicely with this edge of the quilt and our raw edges on this side to be lined up with the raw edges of the quilt here. And then we're going to start sewing from this end all the way down and we're just going to continue this to the next corner. So you can see how that dual feed just really just helped pull that seam right on through. So here we are again at the edge. So make sure we stop a quarter inch from the edge of our quilt. And I like to reverse. Cut my thread. So now again, we have it here. We're going to fold it up so this stays in line and then fold it back and then bring this down so that this fold lines up beautifully up here and this raw edge lines up nicely here. <laughs> 
Okay, so here we're rounding the last corner before we join the other ends. And it looked like I actually did not make too much binding. I made just the amount of binding. I thought I had too much. But, so here again, we're gonna make sure we stop a quarter of an inch from the edge. And we're gonna do like we've done three other times before. And we're gonna fold this up. I think I can't show this too much. So we fold it up, fold it down. And we wanna make sure that this fold at the top is nice and lined up here. Raw edges are nice and lined up here. And something else I forgot to mention, we wanna make sure this is all, these uh, two pieces are nice and lined up. So we'll go, we'll come stitch this down. We're not gonna to go too far though. So we're just gonna stitch a little bit, just to secure that corner. Back stitch to secure that seam. So now what we're gonna do, zoom out. So here we have our flaps. So clearly we've got enough binding, thank goodness. So here is something I actually saw in another YouTube video many years ago, I can't remember who, or I would actually give them credit for this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, usually I'll take the longest piece, um, but I'm going to cut a little piece off. Doesn't really matter how long, you don't want it too big. But what you're look, really looking for is you're really looking for that two and an eighth width here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay this little scrap piece somewhere in the middle. You don't want it too close to this seam, but then you don't want it too close to that seam. So I'll lay it right about here. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my scissors, preferably something a little bit bigger. This is closest to me. So we're gonna lay this here. You could even give it a pin if you wanted to. But we're gonna cut this excess here right along this raw edge of my little scrap piece. Now make sure your little scrap piece stays there. So I am actually gonna pin it. And then we're gonna take this piece and make sure, now before we do this, we'll make sure our quilt's nice and flat and our pieces are nice and flat and taut. And this isn't pinned to the quilt, it's just laying right on top. So we lay this down. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this excess piece from here from this raw edge. So we cut this one by the right side of this little piece, and we're gonna cut this one from the left side of this little piece. So give it a little snip, and then we'll trim this up. So this should be perfect. So you see what we've done there? So now we can take off our little piece here. Now it's actually garbage. So now we're gonna sew these pieces together, but we're not just gonna sew them raw edges or anything like that. We wanna, the way we're gonna sew them is we're gonna sew them on a diagonal. So this doesn't, this avoids um, having a seam going directly down the center. It will distribute our um, bulkiness. So we're gonna lay these out because we're gonna sew along the edge and you'll see. So here we've got these laid out. So we're gonna take this piece like this. Then we're gonna take this piece and we have it this way. We're gonna take it and we're going to twist it like this. So we've got it. We opened it up and we twisted it. So now we're gonna sew right sides together. So now we're gonna take the right side and place against the right side here that we have opened up. We're going to line up this long side with this cut side here and the cut side of this strip with this long side here. Just like that. And you can definitely pin this. As you can see here, the longer the strips you've got, the easier it is to work with. I always find that I always cut them or start sewing them too short. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna add a little pin like that. And it's important that we do get them nice and flat. 
So now, when we start sewing, we're going to sew from this point all the way to this point, right here. Okay, so now we've got it all ready to be sewn. So we're going to come over here. And so we're going to sew from this corner here down to basically this corner here. And again, I just kind of eyeball it. So I can remove my two little pins and so I fold this it should line up nicely here perfect so now I can go and trim this excess um, to about a quarter of an inch and then we'll finish sewing the rest so now that we have our um, end pieces connected we'll just finish sewing our binding down and then we'll go to the ironing board and um, press our seams or press our binding. So now we've got all our bindings sewn on. So now we're gonna go to the ironing board and press it twice. And that's tip number three. Okay, so now that we're at the ironing board, we're going to press our binding flat. So basically straight up and make sure all that seam is pressed out. We don't want any extra, uh, like any little fold or anything, just like with any other type of pressing that we're doing uh, when quilting. So we'll come and initially just make sure we press. And of course, you know, I like to use a steam iron. So just press this out all the way around. And of course, we're pressing from the front. Okay, so now that we have all of our binding pressed, now we're gonna flip our quilt. So this is tip number three, is we do press our binding twice. So we pressed it once, like we just saw, and now we're gonna fold it over and press it again. And this is where the steam iron really plays a major role because that extra steam, that extra heat is really going to press that binding over and create a crease. And it, it's gonna basically, once we start sewing again, it's gonna force that binding to want to already lay in place exactly where we want it. This is very, very important. So we'll start from the corner so we'll lay this down. Not sure if you can see, but we're gonna lay this down and we're gonna line up this folded edge with our quarter inch stitch line, which as you can see is white and it blends in nicely with my fabric. So it's not gonna stick out if for whatever reason it is seen and it definitely might be seen. So we're gonna fold this binding over so it just covers that quarter inch seam. And we're going to do this all around the quilt. But at the corners, we are going to do a little something different. So as you can see here, this binding naturally wants to fold over and naturally has a crease in it now. So this is going to lay beautifully for us. So now when we get to the corner, 
this is where we want to do something a little different. So we came over and like th this side is already pressed forward. So we don't necessarily want to just fold this down. Yeah, we'd have a nice pre mitered corner and that would be perfect. However, because we're going to be sewing coming from this direction, this little piece here, this little flap, has a tendency to get caught in the feed dogs just enough where it pushes it out of the way. And we don't want it to be pushed out of the way. So when we're doing our corners like this, I can come and I can press this at first. But what I want to do before I continue any further is I want to take this fold. So as you can see, this top piece is overlapping this right piece here that which just came from. I want to change that direction. So here's how it was. So I want to make this fold here or this binding, which is the direction I'll be stitching is coming this way. I want to make sure that this overlaps this piece just like that. So you have a beautiful modern corner still, but those feed dogs are just going to um, move the quilt and not have anything get caught on, not going to push this binding out of the way and not get caught. It's going to ride over it smoothly. And then we're going to pivot and come down the other direction. But you'll see that when we get back to the sewing machine. But this is one of the tricks to get nice, pretty mitered corners when we're stitching it by machine. And we'll do that to all of the corners. As, as you can see, everything's staying nice and neat. And if you're working with a lower star iron, you've definitely got an advantage because that steam iron is fantastic. We have them at the shop and I wish I had one at home because I wouldn't be burning myself from the steam and that dry steam really lays these seams nice and flat. And the ironing board holds our quilt. Maybe one day I'll have a lower star in the studio here. So we're coming up on another corner. So what we can do, like another thing we can do, is we can, instead of continuing on here, we can actually fold this end down first, press it, just like we would be doing, and then we can bring this over. There we are. So we can bring it over just like that. And then press that. So there's our nice miter corner. And we'll just continue on with the quilt. All right, so we're at the sewing machine and we're ready to sew on our binding. So this is where it, a lot of the technique comes. Well, pressing the binding and the way we did it is very important. And the size and all these things definitely play a major role in getting the perfect binding by machine for me. Um, but the next thing is, the most important thing is having an edge stitch foot. So having a foot that has this nice center guide, like this number 10D, is the most important thing. Without having this, your stitches just won't lie nice, uh, nice and neat in that seam, and it could just be more difficult. Also, having a machine that has this foot, but also has the dual feed, has that built-in walking foot, is a game changer. It really helps pull all these layers of fabric and batting. So the fabric, the amount of fabric that we're sewing through is eight layers of fabric and binding. Um, that's incorporating the whole quilt and all the binding fabric the way it's folded. And the machine just sails right through it. So, but this foot plays a major role because it will glide or ride right in that seam. 
So let's change to the number 10D. The next thing for me that um, is very important is typically when I'm sewing binding, I want to have my thread or my stitching just get lost in the fabric. So the way to do that is to use the thinnest thread possible. And you, everyone knows how much I love Wonderfill thread. And this is just one of the samples that we have. Uh, but Wonderfill thread has a 100 weight thread called Invisifil. Um, it's cottonized thread. So this really takes the place of monofilament. Um, and it's so much nicer. On, it's better for the machine. It's just nicer to work with. It comes in multiple colors and it's just super, super thin. Um, so with, with it being a hundred weight, you can lay it on fabric and it's so thin, it just kind of just gets lost in the weave of the fabric. And so when using this on the top, it just, it doesn't work well in the bobbin. Uh, so that's where we'll use our 80 weight deco bobbin, the bobbin, but having this on top where our stitches are, where the ball, you know, where we're really looking at our quilt, it really makes a huge, huge difference. So I use my Invisifil on the top, and then I also use um, in, uh, Wonderfill thread product on the bob, in which that 80 weight deco bob. And here I want to match, um, again, I want to match my binding as much as possible. And for what I have at the house, I didn't have a exact match in deco bob and Invisifil. I've got something close, but not exact, um, but they do come in many, many different colors. So you should be able to find something that matches or works for you. Um, and there are some times if I don't have an Invisifil that's the best color, if I have a deco bob that works, I'll use that on the top because it's still 80 weight. It's still quite thin and it works nicely. So I'll put my um, deco bob bobbin in the machine and I'll thread the machine for the Invisifil. All right, so I've got my machine threaded with everything. Now we're gonna choose our stitch. Now over the years, I've used many different stitches um, to sew down my binding. And, and I still play with different ones that I've used in the past. Um, there is one that I pretty much stick with the most right now because it's nice and quick and gets kind of lost and just always holds down my stitches. Um, but I have used many different ones in the past. Now I'll show you an example of one that uh, many people have really enjoyed. And so most of these stitches are gonna be in your, my quilting folder. So one that works beautifully and that I've used many times is simply a blanket stitch. So I've really altered this stitch. So I've uh, mirror imaged it. So it stitches from that side because this is the side that my binding's on. And I want it to stitch directly in my binding. Here is an example of one of my quilts using that blanket stitch. So you can see how I have it stitching inside the binding. And this is just using a regular thread, or maybe it might have been an icicle or polyester thread. Um, so you can see how it just eats into the binding beautifully using that number 10 D foot. It rides nicely in that seam. And then the back looks just like this. So that stitch lines up beautifully in that stitch line and right along the edge of the fold of the binding. So this is one stitch that I've used. That I've used that a lot. Other stitches I've used, I've used feather stitches. Something really, really simple. I've even used kind of like a ladder stitch. And a lot of times you don't really want to use, even with that blanket stitch I showed you on the other binding over on the wall, you don't want to use anything that's too tight. So this works beautifully, but I do like to extend that, that stitch length just so the stitch isn't as tight. It does not need to be as close as most standard default stitches are. Increasing that stitch length is, uh, is important. Even some stitches like this, like this work beautifully, but like this one's too wide. So I'll decrease that stitch width. Um, the stitch length works nicely, probably even narrower than that. But again, nowadays, I like to have my stitch, just like we saw with the blanket stitch on that quilt over there, um, just a stitch on the binding. So what I've kind of defaulted to is this stitch, stitch number four. Now looking at it, this is way too tight. Um, it's 
it's I have to change the stitch completely. But that's what I'm able to do. And on, on the Bernina, you know, it makes it super easy. We can alter absolutely any stitch uh, however we want. We have no restrictions except our mechanical restrictions, which are nine millimeters on uh, the 770. So what I do with this stitch is I, oops, not that. I lengthen the stitch length so I get more of a wave. And I then, then decrease my stitch length quite a, my stitch width quite a bit. And then because I just want this stitch on my binding, I then move my needle position over as far as I can. And so if you're fortunate enough to be on an 880 or a 790 or the 780, um, you're able to actually display the foot on the screen, the foot with the guide and everything. I love it. I wish I would have done this video on a 790 so you could really see the foot on the screen and see the guide and everything because then you'll be able to see that this stitch is actually to the right of that guide and if it's not you can always make it a little narrower here we'll kind of have to play with it um, to get to do what we want to do so what we can do now we'll go back and start stitching and I'll show you some other little things that little tricks that work for me but this should be about where I need it because with our Bernina machines the design and the stitch we see on the screens to scale and this is about where I have it. All right, so we're ready to start sewing. So we want to make sure our binding's nice and flat and where it needs to be. So we're going to start kind of like in the middle of the binding. So not along the edge, not along this edge here. We're kind of starting in the middle of our binding. And having and having our by Annie stiletto really, really helps. So some things that I've discovered, and this is just, and every machine's gonna be different, um, so you kinda wanna work with your machine, and you'll find little things and little quirks that really help you keep everything in line. So what I find, when working with a nine, millim nine millimeter stitch with machine, my feed dogs are much wider than a seven or a five and a half millimeter, so I find that if I can see a slight gap right here in these feed dogs the entire time, I know my binding is where it needs to be on the back. Because if it starts to push over, but my guide and my uh, seam here, this ditch we'll call it, um, is lined up, but here I've got excess fabric, it means the fabric on the back is actually pulling away from where I ironed it, where I pressed it, and where I need it to be. So if I can always see that gap, I'm good to go. And something you'll also find is because we're dealing with eight layers of fabric, we're dealing with the end of the, the quilt, which is really bulky because we've got that batting to our foot at a slight angle. And this is another part, another time that the by any stiletto shines. So I'm able to kind of stick it in the back of the quilt, which is behind the needle at this point. And I'm able, able to, as it starts stitching, I'm able to give it a little pull and it's able to pull my quilt. It doesn't take much force at all. This is worth every penny. Love this stiletto. So now as we start stitching, I can also use my stiletto to make sure the quilt stays so I can see that little bit of binding. And that keeps that binding from flattening out and pulling from underneath. So we'll take some stitches and we'll see how she looks. So here we've got, oops, where are we? So here we've got some stitching, which is perfect. It's the edge is right along the edge, and it's held it down nicely. And we can continue to go from here. And if you do find that the quilt, the binding starts to pull out too much. Just come back and just, I like to just straighten it out. So what I'm doing here is I'll kind of come 
and kind of wrap my fingers around there and make sure that the binding is going where it needs to be. So we can see, let me zoom out some more. Okay, so I can't. So we need to see, we can see our stitching here. So we just wanna make sure that that binding is just covering that up. And it's doing a great job. And so one of the things I find that's very important when choosing a stitch for doing binding is you want a stitch that feeds the quilt backwards consistently. You don't want a stitch that pulls the quilt forwards and then backwards just to create those stitches that you've chosen uh, because that can distort and move your binding away from where you pressed it in the back. So a stitch like this wave stitch or even like a blanket stitch or like a ladder type stitch or a double sided blanket stitch as I call it. Some of the stitches that we've looked at, those either go you know, left to right, forwards, but they never go backwards. They never move the quilt backwards. The needle may move side to side, but the feed dogs only move forward. So as we reach closer to the corner, we're going to need to do some things. One, we want to make sure that this corner is nice and flat all the way around. So where we're coming and where we're turning to, we want to make sure it's where it needs to be. And by pressing with that steam iron really makes a big difference. So typically, if we would have pressed this differently, this is kind of where the point where it can cause issues. But as you can see, those feed dogs are gonna be able to glide right over this and then make that turn beautifully. And so when I stitch, I like to come about halfway over the binding. I don't wanna come all the way off, but about halfway, just the same place that we started with our stitching. So if you can kind of see where we're at, we're about halfway over the binding. So now I'll raise the foot and then we'll pivot. And now we're, and now we're exactly where we need to be. So again, to get started, I can stick my little stiletto right in the back of the binding behind the needle and as it starts to stitch I can just give it a little pull and then at that point the feed dogs the at that point the dual feed in the back has caught the quilt and it's ready to start pulling so we'll be able to finish the quilt from this point on All right, the binding's all done. So it came out just how I wanted it to. So perfect seam. And you can hardly even see the thread. And then none of the white thread from the quarter inch seams show, showed, but if it did, it would have blended right in with either the stitching or the fabric. But even like our mitered corners, perfect. The front, perfect. So it's all ready to go. So this, wall hanging is ready to be displayed at work at the shop super cute panel super super cute but that's how i do my binding by all by machine so hopefully everyone enjoyed and learned something either about their machine or about their different feet or how to put on binding um in general especially by machine and so i you saw the video, I do everything by machine, so everything from the front, but I do press um, the binding twice. That's very, very important. And using the thin thread that kind of blends in works perfectly. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Um, take a look at some of my other videos, including my quote along um, that's been going on. All right, as always, happy sewing.